October 17, 2011. Call roll, please. Stevens? Here. Sims? Here. Herod? Peterson? Here. Collier? Here. Winteringer? Here. Smith? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. The invocation tonight will be given by Reverend Leroy Curbo from Oak Park Church of Christ, followed by the um, flag salute. All who wish to, please rise. Join me in prayer. Our Father, thank you that we can come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the privilege that we have to be an American. I thank you for the opportunity that we have to be a citizen of Shawnee. I thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And Lord, that you have helped us through many difficulties in life. And dear Lord, I just pray today that you would reach down your hand and you would help us to make good decisions. And Lord, that we can continue to see this city go forward. Lord, we love to live here and we love what goes on here. And we're praying, God, that you would give direction to all of us. And, God, that we might all do everything we can to make Shawnee the place to live. For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Attention, physician, pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you, Reverend Kerbler. Okay, item number one, consider approval of agenda. Move to approve. All right, motion to approve by Commissioner Sims. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Collier. Call roll, please. Sims. Aye. Collier. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number two, consider approval of consent agenda. <coughs> Move to approve. Okay. A motion to approve the consent agenda by Commissioner Sims. Second. And a second by Vice Mayor Collier. Call roll, please. Sims. Aye. Collier. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number three, citizens participation. Okay. Item number four is mayor's proclamation, boo on bell day, October 29th, 2011. City of Shawnee Proclamation Boo on Bell Day, whereas Saturday, October 29, 2011, will mark the 12th annual Boo on Bell, and whereas the average attendance is between 10,000 and 15,000 people. This is Shawnee's largest single day event, and whereas over 200,000 pieces of candy will be given away, and whereas Safe Events for Families organizes this event each year. They are a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing safe family fun by promoting family friendly community events. And whereas Safe Events for Families volunteers put in over 1,000 hours for this event, and the candy given away is donated by the downtown merchants, local banks, and preschools. And whereas Boo on Bell is a safe, free, family fun day, <coughs> fest family fall fun festival to be enjoyed by all Shawnee citizens. Now therefore, I, Linda Peterson, Mayor of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, by the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim October 29, 2011 as Boo on Bell Day in the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, dated the 17th day of October, 2011. <laughs> Most of the events will take place on October 29th, uh, Friday night. There is some carriage rides and some events at the Ritz Theater 
that night that are family orientated uh, kicks off at 10 o'clock in the morning and goes until about 10 o'clock that night with many activities from a boo rod car show to pet costume contest to kids costume contest and a family costume contest and dancers and live entertainment lots of good food so we invite you all to come and join us thank you very much and thank you to safe events for families for putting this on for us yet again thank you thank you Item number five, public hearing and consider an ordinance rezoning property located at 1900 South Gordon Cooper Drive from A1 Agricultural to C3 Automotive Commercial and Recreation. Case number P11-11, Applicant React EMS. Madam Mayor, the Planning Commission chose to defer action on this item until the November 3rd meeting. So I would uh, respectfully request the uh, City Commission to defer uh, this item until November 7th. So moved. Okay. Uh, motion to defer this to November 7th. Second. second. And a second by, I'm sorry, by Commissioner Sims, second by Commissioner Winteringer. Call roll, please. Sims. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Collier. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number six, public hearing and consider an ordinance rezoning property located at 422 West Rosa from R1 single family residential to C1 neighborhood commercial, case number P12-11, applicant Chris Sylvia. I'll open up the public hearing. Does anyone wish to speak to this? Okay. Come for can you come forward to the podium? Give us your name for the record. Lawrence Brooks. Mm -hmm. I live at 409 West Rosa, mm -hmm. right down at the bottom of where that uh, parking lot's going to be built. And it has bad drainage and it floods down there. Every time it gets a heavy rain and it's flooded worse since they've started with all the parking lots. But, uh, my property floods an average of about four times a year, and this is just going to make it worse. And that's all I can really say is it's just going to make it worse on my property, make it where sooner or later I won't even be able to sell the house. That's all I got to say. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Is your house the, um, the one that's right, at, it's across the street from this property? And it's, it's not right across the street. And it's, is it adjacent to, the, par to down, the new parking lot? It's down from the parking lot, down at the, right at the intersection of Rosa and Park. Okay. And uh, the water drains down that hill, and with all the parking lots, there's not enough land for it to soak, and so it runs off. And my house happens to be the lowest property on that section. And so it floods into my yard at least four times a year. And sometimes it stays underneath the house. Sometimes it just makes a nice big mosquito pond in the backyard. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else wish to speak to this? <clears throat> My name is Chris Sylvia. I'm the applicant for Dr. Hoster. And I uh, have a site map and civil engineering map or anything else that you may wish to, to see or review or answer any questions you have. Uh, we have addressed uh, landscaping needs, uh, watershed needs, uh, as much as can be for our property. We can't be responsible for the whole street, of course, but uh, we do meet all the current codes and layout of how the property should be done, how the parking should be fitted. Do you, do you have a copy of the map or anything? Do you need it? We have a lot of information in our packet. We certainly do. <clears throat> If you don't have any further questions, okay. I'll step down. If you do, thank I'll you. be here. Okay, thank you. 
Anyone else? Okay. I'll close the public hearing. Um, Justin, can I ask some questions, please? Uh, I know that water runoff was an issue um, mm -hmm. with another property that was close to there. Um, how is that analyzed for um, you know for for a use for for this kind of property when it changes from residential to mm -hmm. parking and how is all that analyzed and is there um, it, it, are the effects mitigated or not? I, I think that they are to the extent possible. Um, I, I think an important thing to remember is that this site uh, has been developed uh, previously. It, it previously had a, a single family residence on it. It had a, a driveway. I think I believe the driveway was paved. It may not have been. But and the lot is also quite small. It's about 4,200 square feet. And so you already had um, a significant portion of the property um, developed as impervious surface. Hard surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, this conversion uh, is essentially, you know, the house has been removed and now it will be uh, concreted or, or asphalted the, uh, the, the parking space and so you, there will be additional, there will be new impervious uh, place. Uh, but there's also uh, a fair amount of property on it, um, in fact more than, than is required by code, um, will be landscaped. And so I think when you look at the square footage, it's, it's, it's roughly equal. Um, like a lot of parts of town, we do have um, some issues here when it uh, when it rains heavily. Um, I, I know that uh, as part of the Kickapoo Street project, um, you know, additional uh, hopefully s some of the uh, uh, drainage can be mitigated uh, through through any uh, new storm sewering that's uh, that's completed as part of that project. But um, so I, I guess what I would say is that I, I don't believe that the problem will be made worse. The problem's not going to go away, I and mean, we have localized flooding in there currently. Um, I believe we'll have that after this is developed, but I don't think it will have it any worse than, than the status quo. Um, and, and I think the other comment was made in here, not just the, um, the barrier between commercial and residential, but there was additional landscaping or an <laughs> additional landscaping zone, so I suppose that is not impervious. And so that is, like you were saying, almost like the residence that was there before with a hard surface that would have had a side yard probably. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, and in fact, our, um, our zoning code is, uh, is somewhat unique in that we, um, we really don't regulate impervious area. We, we regulate lot coverage, but it's really just the, the, the building footprint. And so we might have a standard that says 50% you know, of the lot can be, can be occupied by structures. And, and so a structure might take up 50 percent, but you could conceivably, uh, uh, of course, there are some landscaping requirements, so you really couldn't literally do this. But uh, you, you could, one could, if they want, wanted to, uh, you know, pave additional impervious uh, area. And, um, and in most cases, we don't have a, uh, there's not a code requirement either for a permit. And so we, <coughs> under some cases, we don't even have a, a way to review it. So there is a drainage plan for the, for the parking lot? We do have a, we do have, they do have an, an engineered site plan and, and grading plan that will um, direct the water um, uh, basically away from the immediate property to the east. And then it will, it will hit the, uh, uh, the curb network and then, and then continue to proceed down the, uh, uh, down the street, which is what it's doing today, but within that vicinity. So basically this falls into other construction that we would consider that says that if, um, if, if water is released at a different rate than mm -hmm. what it was previous to this change, right. then some kind of containment may have to take place. I mean, this is still considered for this type of, I mean, a parking lot instead of a different structure. That's correct. All of that is still considered when this is approved. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions? I'll entertain a motion. Let's see, get back to it. Okay. That moved to approve. I second. <laughs> All right. Approval. 
A motion to approve by Commissioner Sims and a second by Commissioner Winteringer. Read the, uh, uh, the ordinance. <coughs> this is an ordinance concerning the zoning classification of the following described property located within the corporate limits of the city of Shawnee, Pottawatomie <coughs> County, Oklahoma, to wit. Lots 21 and 22, Block 31, Rose Garden Addition to the City of Shawnee, Pottawatomie County, Oklahoma, according to the recorded plat thereof, rezoning said property from R1 single family residential to C1 neighborhood commercial, amending the official zoning map of the City of Shawnee accordingly. Call roll, please. Sims? Aye. Winteringer? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Collier. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number seven, consider approval of Rolling Hills Edition preliminary plat located at <coughs> 111 North Bryan. Case number S09-11, Applicant Absentee Shawnee Housing Authority. <coughs> Just the preliminary <coughs> plat. Any questions on what we had? Justin, I believe this preliminary plat had some um, had some language in it about driveways. I thought it said onto Brian that the three lots, you know, on the south side. Yes, those three but, lots on the south. But are they side. to Main Street instead of Brian? Did I just maybe misread? They are actually to Main Street. Mm -hmm. if, if there is okay. a if there is a reference to Brian, that that would be incorrect in the uh, in the report. Okay. Okay. And all of the. Um, Besides the existing residents, um, you're, you're right. Everything would be accessed off of the new uh, street network that's proposed. And there is an area of um, uh, non-development, for a, for a lack of a better word. Will that st will that area stay unplatted and undeveloped? Is that like a drainage area? What we've, what we've got here, and obviously here we've got uh, a case where there's um, uh, the majority of the property is completely undeveloped, and so they're. Um, uh, meeting our stormwater ordinance and providing uh, two different detention areas uh, uh, here to address stormwater. And then in addition to that, on the far south uh, portion of the plat, there's a common area uh, which is approximately two acres in size. And that will be developed um, as a community area and, and it will include a community storm shelter. Uh, there will be walking trail, I believe some, some other type of community functions, perhaps a playground or, or pavilion type structure. And that will be available uh, for the residents of this development, um, as well as some additional residents um, uh, to the west that are also um, owned by the absentee. Is this a gated community? No, it would not be a gated community because they would be dedicating that street as a public street uh, that okay. would be publicly maintained. Okay. Uh, and I did just want to point out that um, uh, all of the proposed lots um, meet our zoning standards. There's absolutely no um, variances or deviations that are, that are proposed as part of this development. Okay. Uh, sidewalks will be included along Main Street and Bryan Street. And um, this particular portion of Main Street uh, is in an area where our, um, our easements are, are, are not uh, cl real clear. And so uh, uh, we'll be obtaining additional right of way and there'll be actually uh, uh, roadway improvements to Main Street as well. So uh, there'll be some significant investment in this portion of town. Move to approve. All right, a motion to approve the preliminary plat by Vice Mayor Collier. Second. And a second by Commissioner Sims. Mm -hmm. oh. hmm? With those three conditions. With, those, with yes. the three conditions. Yes. yes. Okay. So moved, so seconded. Okay. Call roll, please. Collier. Aye. Sims. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 8, public hearing and consider an ordinance annexing 6.47 acres into the city, applicant North Rock Creek School. I'll open the public hearing. Does anyone wish to speak to this? Going, going, okay. I'll close the 
the public hearing. Any questions? Any motions? <coughs> it's hard to flip through and find any of your written notes through all these pages sometimes <laughs> and then come back unless you highlighted the agenda item. Acres. Okay, I have a motion by Vice Mayor Sims. Second. I'm Collier, I'm sorry. And a second by Commissioner Smith. <clears throat> this is an ordinance annexing certain territory and property outside the present city limits into the city limits of the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, <coughs> pursuant to Title 11 of the Oklahoma statutes describing said property, repeating all ordinances and parts of ordinance in conflict herewith, providing for severability. Thank you. Any comments? Oh, roll, please. Collier? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Sims? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Winteringer? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number nine, presentation from Amy Dunn of Gateway regarding a certified healthy community grant. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Amy Dunn, and tonight I'm representing the Pottawatomie Alliance Tour Community Health. Um, we're an alliance that was created about seven years ago, and we focus primarily on health-related issues, primarily through policy change, um, working with businesses, city councils around the county. Um, during this past several years, the city has been gracious enough to hear our requests, and we have made tremendous strides in issues such as clean indoor air, uh, youth access to tobacco and also um, social host ordinances regarding access to alcohol for by youth. Um, so we commend you for your efforts on those specific issues and um, what brings me here tonight is about a year and a half ago um, I received the fortune to be appointed by the Speaker of the House to sit on a statewide committee that was going to develop criteria for the 2010 um, Certified Healthy Communities and Healthy Schools Act. Um, you may hear of uh, Certified Healthy Businesses has been around for a while. Um, this is kind of an extension of that. One of the main issues that came about is that Oklahoma continues to rank um, in the bottom 10. We are currently um, 46th in health outcomes in the nation. Um, and the only reason we jumped from 49 to 46 is because we have good immunizations. Um, so we are hoping to stay uh, at 46 and rising. We have a tendency to be really well at football and in the top five, but we're in the bottom five as far as health outcomes. And so this initiative was basically to allow local communities to make changes at the local level so that they can protect the health of their citizens. And as a whole, um, if each community around the state begins to do that, we can dramatic, drastically <coughs> change those outcomes. Um, during this time, uh, the past year and a half we've been working on this criteria. Um, some of the things that came to my attention was that the community that I lived in, a number of the things that we wanted in the criteria, my community already had. And so I was very glad to see that we were already on the right route to making these things happen. And so now it's time. Uh, the applications are ready. The criteria has been set. And I'm here before you to tell you a little bit about that. Um, in your package you received, um, there is an application that says Certified Healthy Communities Application. The actual application process is done online, but this is a PDF form of that. So um, somebody from the city would be responsible for making that application. Our coalition is more than willing to help advise you in that process because there may be specific things that deal with education or health marketing that you're not familiar with that are going on around the community. So we can partner with you to work on this process. Um, the applications are actually due November 1st, so we are on a short timeline. 
Um, but some of the main criteria that you're going to see are things that Shawnee does fortunately already have. Um, like dealing with alcohol and tobacco. We have what we call clean indoor air ordinance in this community, which covers some of the indoor related smoking issues. Um, we also have in Shawnee, all of Shawnee public schools are called a 24 seven uh, tobacco free school. So that's as fortunate you're in that criteria. Um, this particular application weighs heavily on policies and ordinances that are passed within the community. And fortunately, we have a number of these criteria already in the community. It also deals with things like farmers markets, um, physical activity issues, um, safe routes to schools, walking trails, things that I know that we've been working on and we have actually passed um, looking forward to the future of Shawnee. Um, it also deals with does your community actually do health assessments and currently there is a, a major health assessment that is being initiated in this area um, it's called the MAPS assessment and communities across the state are doing it and Shawnee happens to be one of them that's working on this particular issue and so the questions that um, that the city may not be able to answer as an alliance, we can help you to answer because our membership ranges from anything from people working with the housing authority to DHS, the health department, a number of business owners around the community. Um, we also have a number of tribal partners that are on our alliance. And so we all can bring together um, that expertise to help you answer the questions if you don't have the right answers. Um, and then after the, the deadline for this, like I said, is November 1st. And then the next step is in December, you'll be notified whether you qualify as a certified healthy community or not. This is a designation and then there'll be an award process that will happen later on. But most recently, um, a funder by the name of the Trust, uh, Tobacco Settlement Endowment Trust has come forward and put $3.3 million towards funding these certified healthy communities. So if Shawnee receives this designation, we can actually qualify to make application for an, a, grant, a grant. Through that grant process, um, you'll also see it, it's, it's called the Bright Spot. Um, it's the Healthy Communities Incentive Grants. And I say incentive grants because the idea is to incentivize you to continue on your wellness process so that you can do more things in the community. Um, the money would be specifically to in, improve other health initiatives that you may already be wanting to do or to fund things that you have already on the books but you don't have money to fund. So the money could go specifically to improving the health of the community. Um, specific criteria, you can also see some of the criteria that's listed on that grant application. And the grant application, it lists three different types of levels. Um, it, there's a basic level, a merit level, and an excellence level. And the one thing that's nice is we're competing against communities that are of the same size of us. So we're not going to be against Norman or the metropolitan area, um, just communities that are in the same size as we are. So, um, you know, we may not be able to do what an Edmund can do, but we can do what other communities that are our size can do. And so we are actually considered a large community. Um, which is a population of 30,000 to 79,000. And under that particular criteria, if we just meet the basic level uh, of certification, then we could receive $10,000 in grant money. But if we meet a merit level, which is the next level up, w the nice thing is it's actually a cumulative grant process. So you, reach, you receive the 20,000 for merit plus the 10,000 for basic. So we actually could receive 30,000. And then the beauty of it is, is if we reach excellence level, which there could be very possibility that we do, um, you receive the 10,000 for basic, the 20,000 for merit, and the 30,000 that's for excellence. So we could receive a total of $60,000 for one year. And then next year we would renew again, and then we would also reapply for the grant again. And so it is my understanding that the Tobacco Settlement Endowment Trust is committed to this issue and continue, will continue to fund these grants at the local level. So uh, I would like to highly recommend this council to consider this. This is something that um, I have a personal passion about, but I know there's a number of people in this community that are um, dedicated to improving the health of our citizens at the local level because local people make local change. So. That's all I have, and if anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to entertain questions. 
Is this the result of a um, community-wide meeting that we held at the CPN Heritage Center maybe about a year or a year and a half ago where, where the coalition or the alliance mm -hmm. was actually forming or maybe you, you were just like introducing yourselves to the rest of the community? That was actually, um, uh, this is actually an extension of that. Okay. Um, this is actual legislation that was put in place um, and um, what happened was is our alliance was already doing something towards what we called certified healthy businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also mentioned in the past that um, the city as an employer can apply um, to become a certified healthy employer um, through the business process. Um, there is no money attached to the, um, the business itself, but um, that event that we held at the CPN Heritage Center was, it was called Certified Healthy Business, um, Creating a Healthy Business, and the idea was to teach employers how they could actually save significant dollars by impl implementing right. simple prevention um, wellness initiatives right. in the work site. We talked about certified healthy communities then, too, or maybe that was just an extension of that. How do we even get that get that ball rolling yes. so okay um, so how do we see I mean where does the city fit into this who does who would make application um, actually go through all this do you already have a representative on the Alliance we don't um, I don't believe Tammy Johnson has attended from time to time but that's kind of um, representation is based on um, your employer and so people come and go in within the alliance and then as their expertise is needed they're called upon mayor it'll be it'll be james bryce he just doesn't know it yet <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't supposed to ask <laughs> sorry sorry about that james but we're excited about it i mean it's it's an opportunity just another opportunity for grant funding that we could put toward any of the capital improvement projects that we have that are quality of life or recreation mm -hmm. or and or that would be my, my next question is based on the the scoring that we would we would receive is how how do we um, funnel the funding into projects is it something that that the alliance has oversight <coughs> of or is it something that the city as the applicant um, determines I believe it would be the city that would be de okay. the determinant, but you can, the Alliance would be more than happy to give advice on any specific issues, um, being that we do have ex expert knowledge in certain areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. 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 There's a lot of ordinance information mm -hmm. in here. Is, are we up to speed with ordinances, re, you know, pertaining to all these issues? I don't know how we're going to rank on some of these. Some of them you already do have in existence already. Um, the Clean Indoor Air Ordinance covers um, the uh, all city owned and operated pop properties are smoke free indoors. So you reach a basic initiative right there. Um, you also have all uh, Shawnee Public Schools are 24 seven schools. So that policy is in existence. Um, at Pleasant Grove is also, I don't know if Pleasant Grove is part of the city is it mm -hmm. okay all right so that is also um uh, North, south rock creek is also a 24 7 school but i believe that's a little further out there's a little so bit of that's in the city limits city okay mm -hmm. uh, grove school says they're going to pass it soon but we'll see how that goes <laughs> um the other things are you have a social host ordinance already on your books so you would reach merit level at that um uh, another one is frequent compliance checks to for alcohol and, and uh, tobacco issues mm -hmm. that is ongoing with current law enforcement and um, we also currently work with the ABLE Commission um, on that so we have local law enforcement and uh, statewide ABLE Commission that is working on that issue so these things are already going on and you can see you you've got basic initiative you've got Barrett uh, merit and excellence that are all been met just in the first two paragraphs um, as far as we already have farmers markets, there's a number of things that are already in existence that we probably wouldn't even have to address. I feel that um, through the past seven years that the Alliance has worked with the city, that we've put some of these things in place before we ever knew that something like this could come about. Mm -hmm. And so the criteria is there. Also, do we get um, points for that group that just took off again at six o'clock downtown that Teresa was telling me about? I I don't even know who Sips. organized them, but they're Sips. walkers Sips. and runners and <clears throat> the 5K. Yeah, Monday evening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
So those initiatives are, are already going on. Wow. Okay. Okay. We're a great community, and, and I think that we need to be certified as a healthy community. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Any other questions? Any questions? <coughs> All right. Can I go to item 10? Item 10, consider approval of certified healthy community grant application. So moved. All right, a motion by Commissioner Stevens. Second. And a second by Commissioner Winteringer to have James Bryce apply for <laughs> <laughs> our certified healthy community. All right. Call roll, please. Stevens? Aye. Winteringer? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? I'm sorry, Sims? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Collier? Aye. Motion carries. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 11, consider agreement between the City of Shawnee and Oklahoma Environmental Inc. for doing mitigation and cleanup work for the Oklahoma Corporation Commission on Independent Street just west of Center Street. <clears throat> All right. Want to give us a little background on this? <clears throat> this or just John? John, John can okay. certainly do it. This is um, a Sinclair station at the intersection of Center and Independence that had leaky tanks for years. Mm -hmm. um, I'll let Mike Kennedy from the Oklahoma, Oklahoma Corporation Commission tell you about the details about how we got to this point and a little bit of the background on the program that the state has to clean up these sites. But where, mm -hmm. our, where, our, uh, where it falls in, in this instance is a part of a private property owner's property and a part of our city right away. Um, so, uh, Oklahoma Corporation Commission has been working on it for a long time um, in cooperation with the city to, to get it cleaned up, to study <coughs> the actual plume under the ground. There have been several times when the, the soil and the water, the underground water, have been tested. They, they pretty well think where the air, know where the area is now, so now it's time to go in and dredge out the dirt and the contamination and then put the road back. So. I think it would be a good opportunity to let Mr. Kennedy come up and explain, you know, where the money comes from and, and, and probably a little bit more about the process because he'd be much better than, than I would. Okay. And you might explain again, too, just like I asked you, how come the city of Shawnee is involved in a cleanup between an, an individual and the Corporation Commission? Okay. Uh, my name is Michael Kennedy. I'm with the uh, Corporation Commission. I'm a hydrologist. Uh, the Sinclair station uh, that was mentioned had a leak from the tanks and the fuel from these tanks uh, migrated downhill and got caught up in the utility trench which runs down the center lane of Independent Street. Also in that utility trench is a water main and I believe it's a 10 inch main, is that correct? A 10 inch water main. And uh, there's also some, uh, a little bit of the fuel that is following we're pretty sure it's following another utility trench that goes across the street and is getting into the sewer line, which is causing a vapor problem in the uh, Urban uh, Housing Authority building that is right there. I forget the name of it. Um, for a while, we could not get into the road because it's, it's very inconvenient for us to get into the road. We have to drill wells, shut the road down, and we couldn't do that. But at the same time, we couldn't find one edge of this gasoline flume. We knew where it was on one side. We didn't know where it was on the other. We theorized it had gotten into the middle of the road. Uh, lucky for us, unlucky for the city, the water line ruptured and you guys had to open up the road and we saw it all right there. It was leaking out of the sides. Your city workers were standing in gasoline. So uh, Mr. Krywicki and uh, the city manager graciously allowed us to get into the road to find out what was going on. Uh, we did an extensive geoprobing event, which is where we, uh, we did a grid uh, down the road and found out exactly where this contamination is. So in order to clean this up, we want to remove the center lane, dig out that utility trench. <coughs> um, we are going to get engineers involved so that we uh, take every precaution necessary, remove all the contaminant, put uh, clean dirt back in, repave, and be out of your hair. Uh, the funding for all of this comes from the state's indemnity fund. It is a, a one penny assessment on every gallon of gas that everybody in this room purchases in the state. Uh, it is not funded by the city. It is all funded through the state. 
And the big question is how long do you think the process will take? Ms. Atkinson with OEI will be happy to address that. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Atkinson is the consultant who will be uh, actually doing the cleanup at the site. Uh, I provide the oversight and the uh, releasing of the funds and the approval of the project. Uh, Ms. Atkinson's company does the actual work, so I'll let her answer any questions. Okay. Can you come up to the podium, please? <clears throat> Contained in the access agreement, we anticipate 30 days. Okay. From a start date of? October 24th, 25th, 25th. to? Next week, 24th. Yeah. Okay. And please note the access agreement, we got a $1,000 day. We wouldn't damage clause that we put in there. To stay within the um, targeted date. date. Okay. So what we're talking about here is shutting down that portion of independence um, while this work is being done. <clears throat> and we have all kinds of drawings in here about traffic flow during that time and um, where the work will be done, maybe concentrations of contamination um, on that section of, of independence. Well, I know it's a neighborhood and if any children were like me when I was small, I got into everything I possibly could. So uh, we will take every precaution necessary to make sure that nothing is left on the site so nobody can get into it because it's gasoline, it's explosive, and we want to get it out of there. Uh, I know that the school had some objections to shutting down the intersection. We will not be shutting the intersection down. Uh, the detour signs that OEI will be putting out will be detailed for any drivers so that they know exactly where to go to get around. It will be an inconvenience, but it's less of an inconvenience for this to happen than to turn on your tab and have gasoline come out. So <clears throat> the city of Shawnee is out zero money. Is that correct? Correct. No, we don't have to pay for our own road reconstruction or anything like that. No, we replace what we take out. So your road will actually improve. It's a bit of a rough road over there. And, uh, well, can you leak a little bit more then? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you take your time. You you want to. Well, since we are taking out the majority of the road, if you wanted to, you could come in at the same time and repave the rest if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. What do you think? Motion to approve. All right. A motion to approve by Commissioner Stevens. Second. And a second by Commissioner Sims. Call roll, please. Stevens. <clears throat> Aye. Sims. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Collier. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 12, acknowledge sales tax report received October 2011. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's not that great. Don't kill um, the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, don't kill the messenger. Um, the October sales tax receipts were down about $77,000 compared to last year. Um, we received $1,309,000. And um, compared to the budget, we're down 3.47%, or approximately about $195,000. But on a good note, some of the other revenues are coming higher than anticipated, so right now we're right on target for budget to date. Oh, because other types of taxes are oh. coming in higher. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, do we know, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody knows why this is happening. Sounds like some of the other surrounding areas are doing all right, and we're suffering a little bit more. Well, my hopefully th my with theory Kohl's, was, I'm sorry? Hopefully with Kohl's, we'll see an increase. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I would think so. My theory is we've had a tremendously hot, hot summer, which drove uh, electric rates sky high, and our water rates are high, and gasoline is extremely high during the same period. When you take that, those kind of three things into consideration, that's probably a, a big cause and effect of this whole thing. And actually, one of the largest increases that we saw was the electric franchise fee. Yeah. Oh. That was up $50,000 in one month over budget. Wow. So, wow. so I think once that kind of gets back down, I mean, you're taking away extra money out of people's pockets just to pay for gasoline mm -hmm. and 
Right, and then people have more disposable income. Right. So yeah. hopefully we'll see an increase. <clears throat> Questions? Thank you. <clears throat> Item 13, consideration and action on staff recommendation to update city workers' compensation leave policy, non-union employees only. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward, just to match the state <clears throat> requirements. Yeah. Is this anything we budgeted for? Is it going to affect our budget at all? Generally, when we have injuries, we pay anyways. If somebody's legitimately injured from day one, so it doesn't really affect us. But if for some reason there was a reason why we, we just want to make sure that commission action that was taken in 1990. That's the last time. 04, in 2004, <clears throat> set a three day limit. We just have to expand it so that we're in compliance with state law so okay all right what's what's the limit they're asking for five fourteen days five, five. Eight, eight, eight. <laughs> and we're currently three mm -hmm. we're currently yeah. three mm -hmm. you've been a series of numbers over time move to approve section to approve by commissioner <clears throat> sims seconded by commissioner stevens call roll please sims aye stevens aye Peterson? Aye. Collier? Aye. Winteringer? Aye. Smith? Aye. <coughs> carries. Thank you. <coughs> Item 14, consider bids. A, tapping machine, valve insertion equipment. Please, let's open. Well, it's Okay, on the first page, we open bids on the valve insertion equipment. We've got two bids, one from Water Products of Oklahoma for $47,200, one from Hydrostop at $37,519, and we want to defer it to the next meeting. Check them out. So moved. Okay, a motion to defer to the next meeting by Commissioner Sims. Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. Call roll, please. Sims? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Collier? Aye. Wintering? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. 14B, Biosolids Land Application Apparatus. Open. We open bids on this. We got two. One from Warren Cat was an O bid. And one from Mardell Brothers Quality Truck and Equipment for $304,341. And we want to defer this and check it out too. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So moved. Second. A motion to defer by Commissioner Sims, seconded by Commissioner Stevens. Call roll, please. Sims. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Thank you. Peterson. Aye. Collier. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. 14C South Safe Routes to School Infrastructure Project COS PW 11 02. Open. <coughs> okay, this side is a bid opening for a safe route to school uh, project from uh, uh, the junior high on North Union, uh, northward across 45th to the second driveway of the parking or the apartments uh, <coughs> driveway. Uh, we had several bids. Uh, first bid we opened was from uh, CP Integrated Services from Oklahoma City. Their bid was $105,959.36. Uh, the next bid opened was SAX, SAC Services Inc. out of Oklahoma City. Their bid was $119,690.25. Uh, 
bid from uh, ATEC Paving out of Edmond. Their bid was one hundred forty-eight thousand nine hundred sixty dollars and fifty cents. Next bid was from Shell Construction Inc. Uh, their bid was one hundred thirty-three thousand three hundred thirty-four dollars and fifty cents. Next bid was from Parathon Construction out of Edmond. Uh, their bid was eighty-seven thousand three hundred fifty-two dollars and fifty cents. Uh, next bid was uh, from Wade Construction uh, from Meeker, Oklahoma. Their bid was $93,523 even. Uh, next bid was from Rudy Construction, Inc. Uh, from Oklahoma City. Their bid was $111,989.90. And the last bid open was from CGC LLC uh, from Edmond, Oklahoma. Their bid was $103,734.95. And our estimate, while we got budget, is at ninety-two thousand uh, dollars. I recommend to defer this item until the next meeting, so we could do the bid tabulations and come back uh, to this body with a recommendation. And I would like to note that sixty-two thousand dollars of this project is from the YODOT grant, so we're we got uh, city money minus the sixty-two thousand, so to speak. So we got budget at thirty thousand for our portion. Okay. Move to defer to the next meeting. All right, um, motion by Commissioner Sims to defer to the next meeting. Second. Second, and second by Vice Mayor Collier. Call roll, please. Sims? Aye. Collier? Aye. Witteringer? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, 14D, cutting and mowing of rank weeds and cleanup of trash and or debris. As in years past, we've uh, only received one bid on this, and this is our uh, a contractor that we've used uh, historically for uh, for uh, many years for this service. Uh, the, this particular um, uh, contract um, is for our nuisance abatement services, and so when the city orders property uh, cleaned up of trash and debris, or orders the uh, the lawn mowed or or um, a similar type um, actions, and the uh, property owner does not does not take action. Uh, then, the cert, then the city um, uh, uses a contractor to do such work and um, uh, bills the contractor's uh, rate plus an administrative fee uh, to the homeowner, uh, which is ultimately uh, a lien is placed on the property if that's not paid. Uh, G&G Services is, um, has held this contract f um, uh, for the previous two years and held the contract um, for the two years before that and beyond that as well. And um, seeing as they are the uh, only bidder, and uh, their uh, prices are, are uh, reasonable. In fact, this is the same. I think it's uh, identical to our current uh, uh, prices. And so staff is comfortable should the commission wish to award this tonight. Do we need to read the bids out loud at all? Just one. Or no. I, I would just, um, yeah, the, the, um, I mean, it's G&G Services. Of course, we've got a, a menu of, um, of items here. Uh, I would just defer to the city attorney. Do we need to uh, read all of these into the record? No. Okay. okay, so we have a recommendation by staff um, to go ahead and accept this bid. Is that your recommendation? What's your pleasure? Motion to approve. Okay, a motion no, no. by Commissioner Winteringer to approve staff's recommendation. Second. And a second by Vice Mayor Collier. Call roll, please. Winteringer. Aye. Collier. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens? Aye. Sims? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 15, new business. Madam Mayor, no new business this evening. Item 16, administrative reports. Just one this evening. Rex is going to come tell us about, about we'll Saturday. Airport this weekend. Well, it was a successful event to say the least. Uh, the weather was perfect. Uh, we estimate there were 2,000 plus people that attended. Uh, the Rotary that uh, mm -hmm. served the breakfast and used that as their fundraiser for their community service project, I think uh, they said that they well exceeded their estimates on how much money they were gonna make. And uh, it was just, uh, it was a great day. 
Everybody is to be commended that worked on it, volunteered um, for the day. It really was a wonderful event. I know there are probably <coughs> some cleanups and things to do better next year, but um, it, was a, it was a great day for that event, too. Rex, tell everyone how it's grown over the last three years. Mm -hmm. Well, it started out as four years ago, it was just basically we had an electric griddle, griddle and we served maybe 10 pancakes. Yeah. And uh, two, two planes flew in. And it's just uh, it's grown and evolved since then. And how many planes do you think came in on Saturday? I, I'm still trying to that? get that number, but there were 50 plus? I would say around 50. Okay. Yeah. We, we did sell quite a bit of fuel this time mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the air show was was really impressive mm -hmm. it's really good it really was, it really was. And thanks to you guys for your support and for the community so. yeah the community really came out for this one too yep um, I have to say that I did not eat any pancakes in the morning because I took a biplane ride <laughs> so I thought that was the safest <laughs> The community thanks you too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you, Rex. Madam Mayor, that's all this evening. Okay. Item 17, Commissioner's comments. I was at a Kids Space Park today. I want to thank the Parks Department for um, spreading all the mulch and thank Lowe's again publicly for all the work that they did. It is very, very um, nice out there. Great improvement. Great improvement. Okay, item 18. No one has anything else? A motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Motion to adjourn <coughs> by Commissioner Sims. Second. Second by Commissioner Winteringer. Call roll, please. Sims. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Collier. Aye. Motion carries. I'll open up the Shawnee Municipal Authority meeting, October 17th, 2011. Uh, we have a quorum. First item of business <coughs> is consider approval of consent agenda. So moved. Motion to approve by Commissioner Sims. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Collier. Call roll, please. Sims. Aye. Collier. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Item number two, new business. Madam Mayor, no new business or administrative reports this evening. Uh, item four, motion to adjourn. So moved. A motion by Commissioner Sims. Second. Second by Commissioner Winteringer. Call roll, please. Sims. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Collier. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. I'll open up the Shawnee Airport Authority meeting, October 17, 2011. Uh, we have a quorum. Item number one is consider approval of consent agenda. So moved. Motion to approve by Commissioner Sims. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Collier. Call roll, please. Sims. Aye. Collier. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number two, new business. Madam Mayor, no new business or administrative reports this evening. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Sims and Second. seconded by Commissioner Second. Smith. Call roll, please. Sims. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Collier. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs>